So you mentioned um, that uh, Urbana impacted you in two different ways um, in your career progression, but also just in terms of how you thought about the gospel and Christianity and what that looks like. So um, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting one. I grew up in a Christian home. I went to a Christian school. I was very saturated in Christian culture and what I thought was right and wrong and what have you. Got to my 20s and I think a lot of people um, use this term, start de started deconstructing and looking at, okay, why do I believe what I believe? And honestly getting really, really frustrated with the culture of Christianity in the United States, which is where I'm from, um, and just angry. I just got very, very angry on how we were treating people, the politics of things, where the power was. I just got really angry and I felt pretty rejected a lot of the time because I would be in church circles where I would speak up and say, you know, we've always been told that, you know, it needs to look this way or that way, but I, I actually don't really agree. We're kind of excluding some people from the table. Um, and feeling rejected from that community was painful. What Urbana was able to provide the perspective of, and what I really, really loved about Urbana was it's the heart of that gospel, which is what's actually important to me. So coming in and worshiping in different languages with different cultures where, I mean, the gospel is always the same, but how we culturally adapt is going to look different. And so removing, yeah, separating Christianity as I've always known it and what's true from the culture of what it's supposed to look like was very, very important to me. One thing that I was pretty angry about, and you probably know about more about this than I do, but the Black Lives Matter movement. And I can't remember if it was 2015 or 2018 where they really addressed that. And I just felt so much relief because we were actually talking about it and we were, a, we were addressing something that culturally we had thrown under the rug. And I felt like culturally, at least in the white evangelical spaces that I was in, we we're missing the mark. Um, so I really appreciated Urbana giving that perspective and allowing me to shroud through all that culture and really see what the heart of the gospel was and what it means to every nation, people, culture, experience. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize, like, you know, we talk about one of the signatures of Urbana being the multicultural worship. And it's easy to think, oh, it's just going to be the rainbow on the stage. But it's more than that. Like, it's singing in other languages. And they've coached, mm -hmm. don't be alarmed, anyone who's out there. Like, I don't know any other languages. They have the, they have, they have screens. Um, <laughs> um, but it's, a, it's a great yeah. experience to be able to just even hear a passage of scripture read in another language um, and to hear familiar songs in another language, be able to sing familiar songs in another language. Um, it it's a it's a way to open your heart to the nations. Um, so, uh, and I think that's necessary not only in terms of a global perspective, but to have that global perspective um, within the United States because we definitely do have um, a variety of different nations represented within the United States. So. Um, 